Hello Falcons fans, Anthony Fusco here, live from Elk Stadium, and I'm going to talk to you about the Kelowna Falcons' recent series against the Yakima Valley Pippins. The series before, the Falcons were down in Cowlitz, with the Black Bears taking two of three. But in game number three, the bats came alive and the Falcons were able to grind out the win and avoid the sweep. There's a lot of parity in the WCL's North Division this year, and the Falcons come into the series with a 500 record, which means they're one game back of first. Let's take a look at those games. The National Anthems were accompanied by showers and ferocious winds. Ian Dawkins makes his first start of the season for the Falcons, and Brayden Toyka leads the boys into battle, looking for his second home victory. Toyka was battling batters early, and finally K's Dustin Yates after seven pitches. He takes care of the first inning by getting Lucas Denny to ground out to Matt Fulski at third. Bottom of the first, Josh Tedeschi looking to match Toyka early. After taking care of the first two batters, Tedeschi throws some inside heat that glances off the catcher's glove and catches umpire Kevin Burke right on the forearm. Burkey was banged up yet he decided to get back behind the plate to finish the game. He's tough. Falcon slugger Taylor Wright got his team in the hit column with a blooper to opposite field. Logan Steinberg then hit a bouncer to short and Playa throws wide to first, but Lucas Danny pulls it down and makes the tag to end the inning. The swelling on Burke's arm was pretty gnarly and he needed to apply ice between innings. Top of the second, Toyka looking unstoppable, getting Mitch Ellis to ground out with some weak contact to Connor Gurnick at second. Then Chris Dalto whiffs out a ball that just kept on sinking. Falcons are clear through two. Top of the third with his team hitless through two, Pippins left fielder Tora Otsuka decides to test the Falcons defense with his feet, forcing a quick throw from Logan Steinberg that sports free. Manager Brian Donahue not liking the execution on defense. Tyler Bassetti then steps up and hits a seeing eye single to left that puts runners on first and second. Otsuka tries to get the jump on the pitch but Toika catches him by surprise. Otsuka shimmies and jukes but Toika calmly corrals him back to second and tosses over to Taylor Wright for the easy tag. Nice play. A little bit of luck for Toika who makes an instinctive snag to save a hit and his face. Toika then brings out the brush to paint the corner and Chase Wells can only watch. Bottom of the third, Connor Gurnick got his team pumped up. Drops that hit down the right field line and hustles for a double look at the effort. Matt Shetler then lays down a sack bunt down the third base line and Tedeschi takes his eye off the ball during the transfer. Ian Dawkins then stepped up looking for his first RBI of the season and he delivers. That drives in Gurnick from second. Falcons up one to nothing. Coach Donahue calls for another sacrifice and Matt Volsky delivers with a nice bunt up the line which advances the runners. But the runners would then be left stranded as Logan Steinberg grounds out to end the inning. Bottom of the fourth, Bryce Steckler draws a walk with one out, but then Josh Tedeschi catches him off guard with a sidestep throw to first, and Steckler is caught at second. He was dead in no man's land. On the next pitch, Chris Arpan cracks a shot off the wall in left center for a stand-up double, but he was left stranded. Bottom fifth, Matt Scheffler gets a stroke of luck when Nick Playa boots a ground ball at short, but then Scheffler pushes his luck right away by stealing on a drop ball. Connor White makes him pay with a laser beam to third for the out. Top of the sixth, after recording the first out, Toika then walks Dustin Yates with a full count. Lucas Denny then lines a frozen rope off Steinberg's glove and into the outfield for a double. Jared Gray starts warming up in the pen. Brian Donahue will buy some time at the mound. After drawing a hitter's count, Mitch Ellis then loops a single into shallow right, scoring Yates to tie the game at one. That was the end of the night for Toika, who had five strikeouts, three walks, and four hits. Jared Gray's night starts off with a single from Michael Wyatt to drive in Denny. Gray then K's White for the second out and gets a motivational visit from Raul Ortiz. He says, keep going, big guy, don't worry. Then Tora Otsuka smashes a line drive down the gap, but Chris Arpan gallops in for the sliding grab to end the inning. Teams were scoreless in the seventh, but in the eighth, Lucas Denny hits a towering shot to center, but the ball just barely clips the scoreboard before popping back into play, which counts as a home run. Falcons trail 3-1. to one. Bottom of the eighth, Matt Scheffler starts off the Falcons with a hard bouncer up the middle that escapes the glove of Nick Playa. Connor White catches Scheffler in no man's land, but his throw is off. Dawkins would draw a walk, which then prompted a mound visit from the Pippins coach. Coach Sonhue then goes over the base running strategy with his team. Matt Volsky advances the runners with a perfect sack bunt. Then Taylor Wright walks to first after being pitched around the entire at bat. Logan Steinberg steps up to the plate with the tying run on second and loops an opposite field single to right, scoring Scheffler. The Pippins bring in Michael Wyatt to try to hold the lead, but Wyatt walks Alex McGarry with the bases loaded to tie the game at three. 
Top of the ninth with new life in his squad, Sam Menegot comes out with a purpose. He strikes out Chase Wells looking and gets Dustin Yates swinging to give his team a chance to walk off the Pippins in the bottom of the ninth. Bottom of the ninth, Connor Gurnick led off hoping to spark a rally and he grinded out a walk after fouling off three pitches. Matt Scheffler then moves to bunt Gurnick over but gets under the ball and pops up to Wyatt who nearly turns two with a quick throw to first. Scheffler takes his frustration out on his helmet in the dugout. Gurnick then draws a wild throw from Wyatt and scampers off to second and is waved all the way around to third. As he approaches, the relay comes in on target and he is out by a mile. Aggressive base running getting the better of the Falcons in this game. With two out and nobody on, it was up to new Falcon Ian Dawkins to keep the Falcons ninth inning hopes alive. It's a walk off home run, a bomb over the left field fence and the Falcons walk off the Pippins courtesy of Ian Dawkins and he made his first appearance for Kelowna a memorable one. The Falcons' first home run of the season at home couldn't have come at a better time. With a mini two-game winning streak on the line, the Falcons don their navy blue to prepare for the Pippins in game number two. The most recent additions has the team in top form and brimming with confidence. Cade Meckles joined the team just in time to make his first start of the season and was determined to make a good impression from the jump. Top of the first after forcing two consecutive pop flies, Meckles retires the side with his third pop fly of the inning. Ian Dawkins looking to make an impact, but Colin Kafka pulls the string on him for the strikeout. Kafka then caves right for a 1-2-3 first inning. Top of the second, Meckles keeps the momentum going by forcing another pop fly to right. Meckles was impressive from the jump, working the zone and forcing poor contact. He then fans Dustin Yates with some high heat to retire the side. Bottom of the second not to be outdone, Kafka came out in the second and stifled the Falcons' bats. He then tempted Alex McGarry with an outside fastball for out number two. Kafka then strikes up the side in decisive fashion, whipping Chris Arpan with three straight strikes. Top of the third, it was the makings of a pitcher's duel early with the defense chipping in to keep runners off the bases. After walking a batter, Meckles then sits down Michael Wyatt to end the inning. Bottom of the third, the Falcons' Kafka-esque nightmare continues at the plate. As the umpire confuses balls with strikes and that sends Josh Glenn to the dugout, Matt Botcher manages to put wood on the ball, fouling the ball to left, but Tora Otsuka flies in for the sliding grab, and that keeps Kafka's perfect game intact. Top of the fourth, Meckles sinks his hook into Dylan Plue for the second out of the inning. But Lucas Denny finally breaks the hitting deadlock with a single up the middle. Denny then takes off for second when Josh Glenn blocks a ball in the dirt and slides in under the tag. But Meckles was unfazed and drew yet another pop fly to end the inning. Bottom of the fourth, the Falcons bring up the small ball with Matt Volsky drawing a one-out walk. But Colin Kafka gets Taylor Wright to dive at an outside pitch for an easy 4-6-3 double play. Top of the fifth, Cade Meckles kept the pace of play rolling at warp speed, first forcing a two-pitch ground out to Botcher. He then Cade Tyler Sandoval with four pitches to finish the frame with only nine pitches thrown. Bottom of the fifth, the Falcons kept battling at the plate and Chris Arpan draws another walk for the team's second base runner of the game. Bryce Steckler puts a definitive end to Kafka's no-hit bid with a frozen rope over second base. That puts Arpan in scoring position. But Kafka gets Josh Glenn to chase his second pitch out of the zone to end the Falcons' threat. Top of the sixth, Meckles' resolve was tested when Tora Otsuka sprays a single to left. Wyatt then pops up his bun attempt and Meckles calls back to his days as a shortstop, makes a nice sliding grab. Dylan Plew takes the defense by surprise by laying down a push bunt up the third base line. Meckles then puts an end to the Pippins rally by jamming Lucas Denny, popping him out to Alex McGarry in foul territory. Bottom of the sixth, Ian Dawkins stepped up looking to start a Falcons rally and he got some help from Bradley Beasley who misjudges the hop at short. Volsky then takes advantage of the mistake with a slap single to right field. Coach Donahue waves Dawkins around to third, and he slides in safely. 
but Mitch Ellis whips the ball back to first, catching Volsky, the crowd, and even the cameraman sleeping for the second out. Not to be denied, though, Taylor Wright pounds a ball into shallow right. That scores Dawkins and breaks the deadlock with a crucial RBI. Top of the seventh, Meckles was holding on to the smallest of leads. First, getting some help from Taylor Wright, who storms in and delivers a strike to Steinberg for the first out. Then Meckles pulls the string to get Chase Wells to swing at strike number three. Meckles was fired up. Bottom seven, Kafka's night was done after six masterfully pitched innings, and Liam Hurley takes his place. Josh Glenn steps up and finds a gap between third and short to put two on board. Matt Botcher then slaps a single to shallow left, and Brian Donahue runs up the line away. Steckler home. He turns on the Jets and slides home with no relay. Falcons up two to nothing. Top of the eighth, Kate Meckles took the mound in the eighth, looking to hand the lead over to the closer. After recording the first out, Tora Otsuka pulls a ball down from right field and then scampers around to third, beating the throw with a headfirst splash into the bag. But Meckles kept his cool and collected two consecutive pop outs to strand Otsuka at third. Bottom of the eighth inning, Connor White subs in from Liam Hurley and gets Taylor Wright to sky a ball down the left field line. Tora Otsuka tracks the ball at full speed and sprawls out to make a fantastic diving catch. Alex McGarry then hits a blooper to Otsuka that skips under his glove and rolls all the way to the fence. McGarry does his best Otsuka impression as he slides into third for his own triple in the eighth. He would be left stranded, however. Top of the ninth, Meckles passes the ball over to the big righty closer, Braden Price. Price starts off strong and looks to have the first out, but the ump signal foul ball. Price then walks the batter to put one on with no outs. Lucas Denny draws a walk to escape the full count, putting the tying run aboard. Price, however, keeps his cool and he fans Mitch Ellis for out number one. With Nick Playa in a pitcher's count, Price lays an inside fastball that deflects to the backstop, advancing both runners into scoring position. Price takes a walk and then goes right back to the inside heat. He jams Playa, who grounds out four, out number two. But then Plu comes home to cut the lead to one with the tying run at third. Price puts the ball outside to Chase Wells, who puts the ball well to the left, but Dawkins is under it with plenty of space to end the game. Cade Meckles' aim was on point, and he had a pitcher's duel going with Cullen Kafka, but Meckles would win it, throwing eight scoreless innings and receiving the WCL's Pitcher of the Week honors for his performance. The Falcons were ready to break out their brooms. They were on deck for game number three, and they were looking to push their season-high winning streak from three games to four. The Falcons mascot brings a snack with him to watch the final game of the Falcons series against the Pippins. James Brooks doing his breathing exercises before he makes the start. AJ Landis takes the mound for the Pippins, hoping to salvage something from the series. Brooks has received poor defensive support in his previous starts, but Matt Botcher charges the first hit of the ball game against the bang bang play at first. The next batter hits an identical ground ball, but Botcher fumbles the transfer and Blue is safe at first. Beasley then slaps a bouncer at Matt Volsky. That freezes him and puts runners on first and second. Connor White hits a ground ball to Connor Gurnick, but the ball catches the lip of the infield, skips over the heel of his glove, and that loads the bases. Rather than dwelling on his bad luck, Brooks bears down and gets Nick Bly a ground out to Gurnick, who is able to snuff out the grounder and record out number three. Taylor Wright has been on fire over the past week. He starts off by launching a ball deep to right that drops at the warning track. Wright gets on his horse and launches himself head first into second. Logan Steinberg then cracks a chopper that sails high before landing at Beasley's feet, who forces a throw to first that would drift wide. That brings Wright home around to score, and the Falcons are up one to nothing. Connor Gurnick joins the party. He smacks a worm burner right up the middle to score Steinberg. Bottom of the second catcher, Matt Scheffler got on board in the second when a ground ball deflects off Beasley's glove past Playa. Then Ian Dawkins moved him over with a line drive up the middle. After Volsky grounded out, Taylor Wright steps up with a chance to drive in runs. Landis serves Wright a ball over the plate, and he hits a Texas leaguer. That scores Scheffler and Dawkins. Falcons up 4 to nothing. Top of the third, Brooks continued to field his position well, beating Speedy Otsuka to the bag for out number one. Brooks then completes the 1 2 3 third by striking out Beasley. Falcons looking strong early. 
Bottom of the third, Gurnick lines the ball over Beasley in the left field and rounds the bag hard. Thinks about two, decides one seems pretty good. Botcher then gets up to bat and bounces a ball too short for the 6-4-3 double play. Top of the fifth, Tora Otsuka bounces a ball to first, but Logan Steinberg is there to scoop the ball off the hop and record the first out. Dylan Blue then bounces the ball to Connor Gurnick, but the final bounce skips to the side and Gurnick bobbles the transfer. Beasley hits a slow grounder up the middle and Botcher slides to block the ball from rolling into the outfield. Runners on first and second. Brooks loses control of a breaking ball and hits Lucas Denny. That loads the bases. Michael Wyatt then hits a comebacker at Brooks who knocks the ball down with his glove. Matt Botcher charges the ball, bare hands it and forces the throw to first that sails high and wide. Two runs score on the error. Brooks then gets Nick Playa to swing at strike number three but the ball squirms away from Scheffler who retrieves it and guns Playa out at first to end the inning. Taylor Wright gets on base for the third time in the game with a full count walk, then advances to second when Landis' check sails over Plew's head. Connor Gurnick grows the Falcons' lead with a bloop single to center, scoring right from second. Wright is pumped up in the dugout as his team goes into the sixth, up 5-2. to two. Top of the sixth, Brooks opens up the inning by walking Dustin Yates. Then moves him over to second on a wild pitch that bounces off the screen. Tyler Bossetti then hits a comebacker that strikes Brooks in the ankle and deflects into right field. Botcher tracks the ball down and throws it to home late. But Scheffler quickly whips the ball over to second to catch Bossetti at second base for out number one. Brooks shakes off the injury and waves away the coaches and the team doctor. The next batter hits a comebacker at Brooks who doesn't flinch and makes the final out. Brooks' night was finished and he exited in line for his first win of the season. Bottom six, DJ Daniels let off looking to spark another rally for the boys and he delivers with a line drive into the left center gap. Tadasa Chuck lays down a hard sacrifice bunt that handcuffs Beasley long enough for Tadasa Chuck to reach first base safely. The coaches take the field to discuss the strategy with their players. Matt Scheffler gets the call to bunt and lays down a beauty. Beasley makes the nice play barehanded, but Scheffler has the wheels to reach first safely. With the bases loaded, Ian Dawkins hits a chopper that bounces high in the air, giving DJ Daniels enough time to slide into home. Matt Volsky then responds with a scorching comebacker, but AJ Landis makes the miraculous barehanded grab to turn the 1-2-3 double play. Taylor Wright steps up with two out and collects two more RBI with a seeing-eye single scoring Scheffler and Dawkins putting the Falcons up 8-3. Top of the 8th, after Anthony Garcia shot out the Pippins in the 7th, Brandon Marklin takes the hail for the 8th. After Yates singles with one out, Marklin gets Sandoval to ground into a 5-4-3 double play, and that will end the inning. Top of the 9th, 6-5 righty Ryan Smith is joined by his Sacramento State teammate Raul Ortiz to close out the ballgame for Kelowna. Smith gets Tyler Bossetti to fly out to Daniel Prewin in right, and then he punches out Dylan Blue to end the game and earn the Falcons their first series sweep at home. The Falcons' victory in Game 3 earned them their second series sweep of the season and gave them sole possession of first in the WCL's North Division. The team also extended its season-high winning streak to four games, and were able to grind out victories both offensively and defensively. After his Sacramento State team fell in the regionals of the NCAA tournament, Ian Dawkins stepped into the West Coast League and didn't miss a step. He opened up the scoring in Game 1 with an RBI single between third and short. He covered the outfield well from left and center field, including this over-the-shoulder catch to end Game number 2. Dawkins' ability to generate solid contact and spray the ball fits well into Brian Donahue's offensive philosophy. The fans will remember Mr. Dawkins most for the way he introduced himself to the team. His walk-off shot energized his team and tilted the table in their favor for games two and three. The Falcons' second home series of the year was against the Gresham Grey Wolves, and the series was marred by poor defensive play by the Falcons, which cost them both games of their doubleheader. The boys rebounded nicely in the field. They made some great decisions and were able to execute key plays in critical moments. Good defense starts with good communication. Catcher Raul Ortiz spots Tora Otsuka's lead at second and signals over to Braden Toika, who catches Otsuka in no man's land. Toika makes the right move, corralling him back towards second for the out. The Falcons had a sloppy start in the first inning of Game 3. 
with three consecutive errors loading the bases with two outs. But the team buckled down in pressure moments to keep runs off the board with solid defensive coverage. The Falcons are full of great athletes that track the ball well, but the team occasionally forces the ball into risky situations. Coach Donahue does not like to gift extra bases to the opposition and would rather his team eat the ball when the play starts to unravel. Matt Bosher forced an off-balance throw in Game 3. That played at two runners and cut the Falcons' lead in half. After being moved to second later on in the game, he fields yet another deflection and forces a throw home, but Matt Scheffler bails him out by throwing out the trailing runner at second. The pitchers fielded their position well during the series, including this smart decision to take the lead runner with no outs. Volsky with the smart call to eat the ball, which leads to an easy ground ball with two outs to end the inning. Volsky continues to make the tough plays at third, including this around the horn double play to end the eighth in game number three. The quality of a defense is often determined by the quality of batted balls hit their way. Cade Meckles, the right-handed pitcher, made his defense's job extremely easy in game number two. He was picking the corners, changing speeds, and drew consistently weak contact throughout the contest. Meckles arrived in Kelowna just in time to meet his teammates before game one, and was ready to make his first start the next day in game two. His two-seam fastball gave lefties fits all game. Notice how the late movement on the pitch forces Lucas Denny to lean for the ball, which neutralizes his power and creates soft contact. In pitcher's counts, Meckles likes to tempt batters outside the zone with varying speeds. In full counts, he isn't afraid to target the edges and used his two-seamer to great effect both inside and outside the zone. If a batter started to time his fastballs, Meckles brought out his curveball, which has nice 12-6 action and ankle-breaking potential. He throws his fastball and breaking balls in the same arm slot, which adds to his deception. In the fifth, Meckles uses a high hook that drops into the zone for strike number three. He's an athletic player with experience playing shortstop, which makes him particularly dangerous fielding batted balls from the mound. With the help of Josh Glenn behind the plate, Meckles mixed up his approach in second and third at-bats. After getting Denny but the outside two-seamer in his first at-bat, he uses the two-seamer to jam Denny on the first pitch of the at-bat. The ball hits the junction of the bat for an easy pop-up in foul territory. Logan Steinberg, the Falcons' first baseman, has been flashing his glove and his bat since his arrival in Kelowna. The 6'4", 205-pounder has displayed some excellent range at first, and his clutch hitting has him second on the team in RBI. Steinberg has shown great versatility at first base, scooping balls out of the dirt with smooth hands and footwork. He tracks the ball well on his backhand, which is important for right-handed first baseman. When the ball is bouncing, Steinberg charges the ball well and can get down quickly for scoops with his long frame. He seems to hit best with runners on base and had a crucial RBI single in the eighth inning of game one that put his team in position to win. Falcons manager Brian Donahue has built his team on small ball and manufacturing runs. Every player is expected to sacrifice their at-bats in order to move a player from first to second or second to third to get runners in scoring position when the opportunity arises. With the game on the line in the eighth inning, Matt Volsky lays down a perfect sacrifice bunt to move the runners to second and third. Taylor Wright then patiently draws a walk to load the bases. Logan Steinberg then punches a ball to right to bring the Falcons within one. Then with Michael Wyatt struggling on the mound, Alex McGarry waits out a walk and the game is tied. In game two with the game still in the balance, Bryce Steckler draws a full count walk with two outs to keep the inning alive. Josh Glenn then steps up and jumps on the first pitch. He finds a gap between third and short. Matt Botcher then gets on the pitcher quickly as well. Coach Donahue runs up the line to wave Steckler home and the gamble pays off as the ball is cut off at third and the Falcons double their lead. In game number three, DJ Daniels started off the sixth with a first pitch hit to the left center gap. Davis Tadasichuk lays down a sacrifice bunt, but speeds down the line to beat the throw at first. Matt Scheffler gets the signal to bunt and lays a beauty down the third base line and lunges at the bag just in time to beat the throw, loading the bases. When the bases are loaded with no outs, any contact can be an RBI. And Ian Dawkins puts just enough bounce on the ball for DJ Daniels to slide into home safely. The Falcons will continue to use aggressive base running tactics to harass their opponents once they get on base. But the more they tempt their opponent to throw, the riskier this endeavor becomes. The Falcons are at their best when they push for extra bases. When the ball is hit to right, Ian Dawkins never slows down and rounds second at full speed to reach third with plenty of time. However, Volsky gets caught rounding first wide and is thrown out. 
Concentration and good communication with base coaches is key for successful base running. And if you take your eye off the play for a second, you could get caught in no man's land. It can be tempting to run on first movement from the pitcher. However, it is important to make sure that the pitcher is moving towards home first. Otherwise, it's a long run to second base knowing the ball is waiting for you. You never know when getting thrown out on the base pass will come back to bite the team because the next batter always has the potential to clear the bases. When a pitcher bounces a ball to the catcher, it is important to make sure that the ball is bounced away from the catcher before running. The pitch stays at the catcher's feet and Matt Scheffler doesn't stand a chance. Coach Donahue loves it when his players hustle hard to make plays for their team. However, sometimes his players try to do too much in a single play. Donahue believes in his players' abilities, however, and will often wave them around for extra bases himself, but the individual skill of the defense is hard to predict, and sometimes a perfect throw can ruin a good idea. At the end of the day, the Falcons will live or die on the base paths, and if they continue to hustle hard and keep their eyes moving, there will be plenty of scoring opportunities for them this season. The hustler of the series goes to Connor Gurnick, who put his body on the line to help his team win the series. Gurnick opened up his series with a blooper that dropped beside the first base line and stretched it into a double with pure hustle and a head first slide. He took a four seamer back up the middle with two outs to drive a run home in game number three. His bat was hot in the series. In the third, he lines a frozen rope over the third baseman's head and rounds first hard, but has the foresight to stop and take the single. At second base, Gurnick kept his body in front of the ball and delivered consistent throws to first. When there were runners on base, Gurnick battled hard at the plate to generate solid contact and drive in runs. After a bittersweet series against the Gresham Grey Wolves, the top performance of the series goes to Canadian-born shortstop Taylor Wright, whose hot bat helped the Falcons continue their winning streak. Wright opened up the series swinging and never let up first dropping his hips and punches the ball to opposite field. He's developing a reputation around the league for timely hitting and is starting to see less pitches in the zone, which is fine with Wright, who will always take a walk when it is offered to him. Wright displayed confidence at short in the series, making routine and difficult plays in the field. He takes his job seriously at the plate, and if you throw him an inside fastball, he will gladly get the barrel around to launch it into right field. He's an aware base runner and will take second if he senses the opportunity. Wright has a meticulous routine at the plate and locks into every pitch. He identifies the ball quickly out of the pitcher's hand and he will launch an outside pitch up the middle or to opposite field. Wright has led his team in RBIs all season long and he played it four in game three, earning his team the win. Taylor Wright was a late addition to the team roster and has turned out to be amongst the most valuable members of the team. Not much was expected of the freshman Canadian when he stepped on the field opening day, but his performance throughout the first half of the season has made him one of the players to watch out for in the West Coast League. It's easy to get pumped up after a four-game winning streak, but the Falcons will need to conserve their energy. They're now going on a six-day, six-game road swing through Washington and Oregon before returning home at the end of the month for a three-game set against the Cowlitz Black Bears as the halfway point of the season approaches. Until then, keep on following your Kelowna Falcons as they make a push for the playoffs. My name is Anthony Fusco, thank you for watching, and now enjoy the top five plays of the series.